Welcome to Art and Shit with Sean, Ted Babcock, cock, and for Nicholas. Today's episode is about the fucking artistic process. Ted's process is to sort of throw wacky shit up in the air. I mean, not actually, I'm talking about fucking ideas. This is an analogy, don't be a dumbass. But anywho, he actually found a literal thing to throw in the air, so fuck it. Let me try that fucking thing. Whoa, badass. Alright, enough fucking around, this is a fucking art episode. Let's move on. But first, a little liquefied inspiration. Not strictly necessary. Inspiration is found in your gut. It's not something you put there. It's already fucking there. But fuck it. It's an analogy, so drink a poo. Alright, well, depending on the kind of art you do, you'll need the proper tools. Like, these here are not the right fucking tools. What the fuck? Let's move on. So, Ted here is an extraordinary painter, and I asked him where he gets his inspiration, and Ted says to me, he says, I think of so many strange and terrible and wonderful things, and it makes me so fucking sad they don't exist that I make them fucking exist. First come his wacky ideas, like scraps of cloth, and he starts sewing them together. No, not literally, this is a fucking metaphor, but no one wants to stare at Ted's head whilst I talk about this shit, so, see what I mean? Huh? Anyway, it's like making a mental doll that he's going to stroke into life and ejaculate most colorfully onto the canvas, and everyone has their own process and obstacles, and speaking of Ted's head, Ted's fucking commitment to art is full on. A while back, Ted came over and he says to me, he says, Hey man, my ideas are all stuck in my head and won't come out. I think it's because my hair's in the way. I need you to get rid of my hair so my ideas will come out. So I says to Ted, I says, Okay, sure, I'll shave your fucking head. So that's what I did. I shaved his fucking head and uh, released the strange and terrible and wonderful weird shit he's got bouncing around in his wrinkly pink meat machine. Alright, whilst Ted finishes his pretend to think about shit by sewing a fucking doll scene. Ted, why are you so into that? It's just a damn analogy. Fuck it. Like assholes always fart, and artists gonna art. Uh, they're gonna art so hard. Anywho. Uh, let's see what Fernicolas's artistic process is in the meantime. Now, you may wonder why Fernicolas is sitting out in my backyard in the fucking rain like a dumbass. Well, oh, it's because I asked him to for, you know, the scene. <laughs> I guess I'm the dumbass, but anywho, for Nicholas's process is both hindered and liberated by the concept of permission. If you've been in a rigidly structured circumstance for a while, the military in for Nicholas's case, whoa, then you know that you don't just do shit. You wait for orders and then you carry your orders out. If you want to do something else, you got to run it up the fucking flagpole, so to speak, and get permission. So somewhere in the back of his mind, he's waiting for permission to do art and shit, but. He realized he doesn't fucking need permission from anyone out there. He realized he can give himself permission to do whatever the fuck he wants, and so can you. Now, for Nicholas has been forged in an extremely hot fire, and like cooled metal, it can be hard to bend. But he's one of the smartest motherfuckers I know, and he knows how to make his mind his bitch. Like, he decided he's doing this damn scene with an elf hat, fuck it, and drove all the way home to get it. Artist's gonna art. Sometimes permission issues are more elusive, like the voices in the back of our head always telling us the shit we're supposed to be doing. You should be doing have-tos and must-dos, such that it doesn't even occur to us to give ourselves permission to do shit that's fun. Another obstacle to art is we think there's some kind of right and wrong way, represented here by Fernicolas trying to make sure everything is lined up, symmetrical, even, level, plumb. But like I said, he's a smart fucker and has learned to ride the horse of the mind and not let the horse ride him, or kick him in the nuts, that shit hurts. Sometimes you just gotta say, fuck the right way and fuck the wrong way. I'ma transcend both and I'ma do it my way. Represented here by throwing shit in your skull bucket and shaking the fuck out of it. Then ask yourself, is it fun shaking up my skull bucket? If the answer is yes, then you're fucking doing it right. No further questions necessary. And whatever the result is, is the result. And for Nicholas's result was this badass Christmas present for me, an altar thingy to put my travel skull on. Notice how the bottom is asymmetrical? That shit's on purpose. That's a nod to, fuck it, I'll do it however I want. And I fucking love it. You demand, for Nicholas. Well, Ted seems to have stitched together some ideas and elements for his painting, and it's something like, what if I cross something totally mundane like a bag of chips with a mind-destroying monster from another dimension? Or maybe it was, what would a mind-destroying monster from another dimension snap on if he were just a regular motherfucker? I'm not really sure how it went down. I don't go too deep into Ted's brain. It gets fucking weird in there. But anywho, let's see what he came up with. Get it, Ted. Boom! Cthulhu Chips Madness Flavor. Well, there you go. That's how Ted do. And before we move on, uh, if you want to find his shit, 
there it is. Knock yourself out. Support the fucking arts. Uh, uh oh, he has another idea. Don't look into his eye too long, you'll go mad. Speaking of mad, my process is fucking weird. I don't really have ideas. I'm mostly empty like this fucking crate. I don't mean vapid. I mean, I'm often in touch with my inherent emptiness more than I'm identified with my thought. And the thing about emptiness is that there's an infinite amount of wiggle room, so. My process relies on stimuli and visual triggers that expand in my void. Some of the shit here was vomited up by a seagull. Uh, I like weird and old shit. I like these weathered bones I found whilst wandering the deserts of southern Baja. Old wood, rusted metal, duh. When I write a poem, I'm just looking at a picture I took and then words plop out like turds. And when I'm doing an assemblage piece like this, I let the shit I'm working with decide what it wants to be. It tells me a story and I just help it into existence. My poems pretty much write themselves and my art puts itself together. And yes, I do realize that sounds like artsy fartsy bullshit, but that's exactly what it fucking feels like for me. No shit. It's weird. It's almost fucking spooky. Anyway, voila! I made this fucking thing. I call it the Shrine of El Chupacabra. All this shit told me a story, but I'm not going to tell you the story it told me. It may have a somewhat different story it wants to tell you. It's not up to the artist to tell you a story. It's up to the artist to provide a catalyst so you can be inspired to hear the story a piece sees fit to tell you. Every story that a piece tells you is a secret communion. As you observe its quantum wave, it collapses into photons, which travel into your wrinkly pink meat computer. and You become the artist as you piece it back together in your mind momentarily intimately bound to both observer and observed creation and creator as it whispers in your mind to hopefully produce some chemical cascades of emotion because fuck it why not well everyone has their own obstacles and process for art if you don't know what yours are then figure it the fuck out or don't i'm not the fucking boss of you i'm sure there's something on tv you can watch I guarantee you there's a bunch of motherfuckers on your phone that want you to buy their shit or click, follow, subscribe, whatever the fuck. The point is, go do you. And if you decide to do art, you'll change the way you think, and thus will change how you perceive reality itself. And if you're lucky, it will lead to a happy fucking madness. <laughs>